Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to Digestive Reset. And I'm here to talk to you about something important. This is Ina with digestivereset.com. I'm a doctor of pharmacy and I've been practicing functional medicine for the past 14 years, particularly seeing clients for functional medicine, healing, uh, IBD clients, Crohn's and colitis, and uh, people with chronic gut and hormone problems. And today's topic is why is it important to test and monitor calprotectin in stool for inflammatory bowel disease patients, even in pediatric patients, although the studies are yet to catch up with this. I, I think it's important to spend the time because I've seen how much just that one monitoring tool can do for my clients. Uh, the disclaimer you could find below, but uh, just a quick note, this information is not a medical advice. Follow your advice from a healthcare practitioner while consuming our content. Uh, I wanted to um, bring this because uh, a lot of my clients say that they would have loved to be proactive. They would have loved to do something on their own because uh, seeing a, a doctor is extremely important not to underestimate that. Uh, yet um, it's part of the healing, your intention to heal your steps, um, what your, your actions, they all will help you get there faster. So why um, I, I think being proactive and getting to understand the, the labs and getting to understand what you're taking and what it's doing and monitoring is because it's part of the teamwork. You, your consultants, your coaches, your doctor, your gastroenterologist, if they're all in the same group and understand what um what happened from month to month, from year to year? What is your progress? Are you improving? And what, what could be a good monitoring tool? And you're on top of it. That makes a world of a difference. So um, what is Calprotectin and uh, where we are with it right now? It's uh, it's not an old tool because uh, going, to, going back to when I got uh, sick in 2003-ish, I know that calprotectin was not something that was tested for me. And I think it's, uh, it's great that we have this particular monitoring tool. Uh, it's an indicator of inflammation in gastrointestinal tract. So um, it's relatively unique, calprotectin, and it's great that we can test. And it, uh, in literature, we call the calprotectin test can be used to exclude IBD because it's not fully uh, specific to IBD. It's, it, it also can um, be pertaining to um, other inflammatory um, conditions, even cancers. Um, just a reminder for those that just... Um, Joining in, uh, inflammatory bowel disease is uh, inflammatory uh, immune system disease. It has intestinal symptoms inside and um, they feel and, and look on imaging, for example. And they also have extra intestinal symptoms like symptoms on the skin or oral sores. Uh, with ulcerative colitis, we know that it affects more of colon, affects more rectum, we see more of a diffused inflammation, and more of the clues that this is ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's, things like diarrhea and bloody stools are more pertaining to um, colitis patients. Also, lower abdominal cramping. I, is classic. Um, and with the um, worsening of a condition, we see things like perforated bowel. That's also another clue when they're diagnosing or when you're trying to figure out 
what is it looking more like Crohn's or colitis. With Crohn's, it's a, a tiny bit, we could call it more serious because the entire system is affected and could be any portion of that gastrointestinal tract, thickened walls. Uh, we have evidence of fissures. We have more of that discontinuous, more mural in nature lesions all over um, on, on, on imaging. And also clues to differentiate it from colitis would be classic abdominal pains, fevers, intestinal obstructions, and uh, risks of fistula, perineal uh, injury, and extra intestinal symptoms like fatigue, and oral ulcers. And again, we, we see things like skin and um, vaginal symptoms even. Uh, with inflammatory bowel uh, disease, we know that the, the activation of a whole immune system is involved. And a good diagnostic starts with a good and thorough investigation. There is an initial assessment, doctors would uh, Will listen to you and your story and um, your symptoms, how it came all about, and possibly colonoscopy, possibly endoscopy with biopsy, most likely. Imaging is uh, sometimes added. And of course, lab testing is very important. Inflammatory markers in blood are often tested for systemic inflammation. They're non-specific, really. The reactive protein you'll see often being uh, elevated. Uh, but again, that could also be for other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or, or other inflammatory uh, conditions. It doesn't have to be Crohn's or colitis for C-reactive protein. But it's again, that's another, if, if you've been monitored by that marker and the doctor says here, C-reactive protein is elevated, now it, it has been decreased because of the treatment you've been using. So that's that's another tool uh, used uh, to, to monitor if the calprotectin, let's say, was not used in the past. Um, the good evaluation for absorption needs to be there, like um, monitoring for iron, for to rule out anemia, although albumin is quite um, common in Crohn's and colitis patients because they uh, have poor absorption due to inflammation. So obviously protein is not absorbed very well and you will see low albumin as a result. Low other vitamin levels, Bs, Ds, A, A and D are very common. They're fat soluble and are more difficult to absorb. And of course, those would be classic because we, with inflammatory gut, it's difficult to absorb. So you will have lower vitamin levels. Uh, and sometimes the doctor would even test for anti-saccharomyces service antibodies. These are more common to be positive in Crohn's and uh, more common to be negative in ulcerative colitis where panka, also another inflammatory immune marker, uh, is usually negative for Crohn's and um, positive for ulcerative colitis. But again, this is just a general um, statement. It's it, it could be you could be that uh, uh, the person that uh, doesn't go by this particular general rule. And also, we do have uh, things to differentiate. We go and and look for. Uh, other tests that um, your doctor might find more specific for you. But with calprotectin, um, there, there's something that um, in literature, they want to see sensitivities and specificities. Uh, we do have good sensitivity, not such a high specificity for calprotectin. That's why it probably took a long time to become a staple, still not, a cons not considered to be a staple to IBD, yet it's a critical, really good stool evaluation tool. Uh, another, another um, like I said, presence of blood is uh, something that we know something's going on with activation of immune system, something I did not discuss before. 
Uh, what is really calprotectin? It's an abundant protein. It's a predominant protein in neutrophil count. Uh, with um, neutrophils, there there also before calprotectin came about, there was such such plain and simple thing as CBC, complete blood count, and that would be the very first thing. Uh, to look when any inflammatory uh, bowel disease uh, was to rule out. And that white blood count high is, that means there's inflammation. Again, nonspecific, that could be high with uh, infection as well. So we, when we have that inflammatory response in the gastrointestinal system, we do assess, associate it with the response in the neutrophil migration. Obviously, neutrophils are activated, and they release, um, uh, and they affect that release of calprotectin, which now we can measure. And uh, it, it gets accumulated in blood. So the best thing to do is um, look for it in the blood. Meta-analysis studies, um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, show that calprotectin, calprotectin um, shows really great, though 90% or even higher sensitivity in uh, inflammatory bowel disease, but specificity is uh, still has more variability, especially in pediatrics, kids, and we want to um, still collect more information then before we could make um, this more of a staple, although most of gastroenterologists now will offer this, and I am really, really thrilled that this is happening, and you could be, be you could become part of that um, proactive team where you say, hey, doctor, uh, I wanted to know how's my calprotectin from that appointment to this. Although the one of the reasons why the specificity is not there is because it could also be increased in celiac patients. It could also be increased with infection cases. It can be increased in cases where people take chronically non-steroidal inflammatories like um, Motrin, for example, ibuprofen, Advil. In these cases, we usually recommend to stop for a few weeks and retest calprotectin again. If after stopping the medication, if the calprotectin comes down, we most of the time conclude that that was the case of use of those anti-inflammatories versus possibly having the colitis or Crohn's. So that's, that's why, because of the specificity, it's not a diagnostic uh, measure, yet it's so uh, helpful, yet it's uh, from appointment to appointment, if, even if it wasn't a diagnostic tool per se, if it's really, really helpful to go from one appointment to the next to see what was working, how you're improving or not improving, uh, it's, it's a wonderful idea to ask whoever you work with, what is my calprotectin from three months to the next three months to the next six months. Uh, when we look at results, uh, anything less than 50 with symptoms, we think that it's IBS more than 150. It is suggestive of inflammatory bowel disease, possibly malignancy infection. So colonoscopy is ideal. And after the Crohn's or colitis has been diagnosed, then we use it as a monitoring tool from one appointment to the next. <clears throat> Borderline is somewhere 150. Um, and again, ruling out and said use is really, really important. Um, <laughs> if you don't have an option to do functional testing, functional diagnostics, which I am a biggest fan of, I'm, I fell in love with functional medicine quite instantly. Um, discuss with your primary care doctor to consider doing that test. To Skype, discuss with your GI, have I been monitored? Uh, what is my health protected from one uh, visit to the next? And monitoring symptoms and keeping records is important. What have I been eating uh, from that appointment to this one that made my cal protectin maybe worse? Maybe I should consider um, not eating so much of the fried food or inflammatory food and go on anti-inflammatory diet. And retesting as a measure and monitoring is huge and very, very important part of the progress. 
and keeping the progress notes. So I hope this was very helpful because I do think it's very important to test and monitor calprotectin. Um, the labs, uh, functional diagnostic tools uh, for, for stool tests, for example, that I work with my clients. And um, when we look at these results, it's also helpful uh, when there's progress with an anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle changing um, and all the coaching we've done, it's great to look at those. Um, and I hope this was helpful. I have an event coming up. I discuss, um, I have a really long webinar on August 23rd. The link is below. I hope you could join, so sign up. I'm going to have a lot of information shared on that event. Um, and uh, it was great to be here with you. Enjoy your day.